Reddit, what is one way you have seen someone screw up their life with just a couple of words? A guy I was once friendly with got stopped by a police officer for speeding while also under the influence. He wondered why he got taken to headquarters, and later to jail, after he tried to bribe the cop by saying, here's $50, go buy yourself some donuts and let's forget the whole thing. On this end police here in Chile are very strictly against corruption and wear cameras at all times. There was a video on the news of a foreigner trying to bribe the officer with increasingly large amounts of money. He got his laughed out of the country. My dad once got pulled over while driving home from a fishing trip with his buddies, I can't remember why, but it was something insignificant. They'd just made a gas station stop and had a box of donuts in the back to get them through until their next break. Dad was driving and told everyone to stay calm. The buddy holding the donuts, who, coincidentally, was pretty under the influence at the time and IIRC had an open container in the car with him, proceeded to flip his shit and start freaking out. We're gonna get arrested, we're gonna get arrested, why did he pull us over, we're gonna get arrested. Practically crying. The others are trying to get him to shut up while my dad's trying to talk to the cops, he's blubbering in the back seat. Cop is about to let them off with a warning when, out of nowhere, drunky McDrunk face rolls down his window, thrusts the box of donuts out, and tearfully asks if the officer would like one because, cops always love donuts. The others dragged him back into the car, profusely apologized, and held him in his seat. Cop had a good sense of humor and just laughed it off, gave them their warning, and they were back on the road. I don't know if it was mentioned before. In 2011, Alexandra Wallace, a UCLA student uploaded a video to YouTube mocking Asian UCLA students. The video went viral resulting in numerous videos mocking her and her blatant racist statements. She had to leave UCLA. Is that the one of the blonde girl who was mocking Japanese students for calling their families to see if they were okay after the tsunami? Yeah, that's her. And about their families visiting to do laundry, etc. My friend got stopped for a DUI. He told me he was sober when we left, but when we stopped for the cop he told me he actually had been drinking. He managed to pass all the field sobriety tests and even a conversation with the cop for like 15 minutes. The cop was going to let him off with a speeding ticket, he was speeding, and asked my friend to sign the ticket, my friend said no. The cops arrested him and took him to jail where they gave him a breathalyzer, discovered he was over the limit and then wrote him up for a DUI. I once watched someone talk themselves out of a job. They were giving a presentation to a senior client, in which they were providing update information on the last three months of work in a particular project stream. Their presentation consisted of them stating that they didn't know what they were talking about, had done no investigation work, and had made up their own story, yes, that is a quote. Anyone remember the Balloon Boy incident? This happened maybe six to seven years ago. A family where the dad was some sort of inventor made a weather balloon that flew off and they panicked because one of Thea's younger boys who was around six at the time was missing. They thought he was up in the rogue weather balloon. News crews were called it became viral as cameras followed the balloon around, even panicking when they saw something fall out of it. Turns out boy was found safe, playing at their attic. They still became viral and news outlets want to interview the family and dad was more than happy to comply. Well kids being innocent kids during one major news network interview, the sleepy boy said, we did it for a show. You can see that look in the dad's eyes of I. Revealing that the rogue balloon boy was staged by the dad so that the dad can shop for a reality TV show for his family. After that they went under a hailstorm of investigation, CPS was called and they were sued for the hoax. Big mess. I don't fell sorry for the dad, I feel sorry for his kids going through public scrutiny just Beck daddy wants his 15 minutes of fame. Still better than pranking his kids. Ahh yeah dad yo 5. That was my weekend pretty much watching all the compilation vids youtubers did of him crossing the line. I feel sorry for the little girl too, they was a clip which the audio was cut where she was literally begging for the abuse to stop and she wanted to go home, home being her bio mom. Very heartbreaking. Then the VID of the dad saying it was okay to hit the girl Beckett was his sister, seriously, I wanna know what CPS team handled the er case before and did not deem that as abusive. Obviously it's all hearsay at this point but I read that evidently before this recent uproar, 
CPS had no idea the video's slash YouTube channel existed. World's Dumbest showed a couple of commercials this guy's did for stuff he invented. One was a truck add-on thing that might have been a decent idea, if a seriously expensive one, but the commercial was so super cringy. The guy humped the thing like a dog humping someone's leg at one point. The other was a wall-mounted back scratcher. Not such a good idea, and even cringy ER, cringier, due to having the kids band play the jingle. Poor kids. I once messed up a job interview when I replied to a question with, yeah, I have anger issues, but I usually draw them out. Proceeds to show him angry scribbles. Haha, <laughs> I think back in my life in interviews and the dumb things I said. I remember many years ago when I was young and I was interviewing for some job and it wasn't sales but it could lead to a well-paying sales job and the ladies telling me all the advancements I could make and I said oh I don't want to do sales at all. I'm not a good liar. Interview ends 60 seconds later. Oh man, one of my first interviews is probably my favorite and least favorite thing to look back on. My girlfriend and I broke up a few months earlier, and I guess I wasn't really over it, because somehow, why, she came up and I basically answered questions with like, well according to my ex, my weakest point is blah blah blah, looking back I can see the interviewer's faces just going nope. Looking back I can definitely say I learned a lot from that interview, but oh man, did I say some cringy stuff? I was once interviewing at Spotify for a development job, and told the interviewer that I don't use Spotify and prefer to watch YouTube video while I work. Oops. I used to own a communications business, and we had just landed Coca-Cola as a client. We flew down to Atlanta for an initial meeting at corporate HQ. When they asked me what I wanted to drink, without thinking I asked them for a Pepsi. You should have just started laughing right after. They'd probably think it was a joke, them being coke and all, and you'd have made a great first impression. About a year ago in my job we were doing trial days, we were hiring three new people and had five people in for a trial day, one person a day Monday to Friday. My manager asked me to email her that night to let me know how the girl I had for the trial day got on and if she was worth hiring. So everything is going great, lovely girl very easy to get along with and adapted very easily. So I'm making some conversation and she mentions that she goes from job a lot and gets bored of jobs very easily. Literally because of this I had to tell my manager not to hire her because we'd only be replacing her soon enough. I still don't understand why someone would say what she said during a trial for a job, she shot herself in the foot by saying that. Although on side note, the three people we did hire are still working for us a year later so I suppose there's some happy ending. I saw somebody screw up their own life and somebody else's simultaneously. A few years ago my 15 year old cousin got pregnant. She wanted an abortion, my aunt wouldn't let her get one. Adoption wasn't an option either. You're not getting an abortion, you made your bed so you lie in it. So my cousin carried the baby to term and had a healthy baby girl. She dropped out of school because my aunt wanted nothing to do with the baby so she had to tend to it full time. A week of this goes on and my cousin decides enough is enough and runs away with her 17 year old boyfriend. My cousin had straight A's until she was basically forced to drop out. She still doesn't have her degree and is still living with her boyfriend somewhere in Washington. He has a construction job and my cousin has an ETSE shop. They're doing okay, but I know my cousin always wanted to go to college. My aunt had to raise the baby and is still raising her she is 45 and did not want another kid. What on earth did your aunt think would happen if a 15 year old had a kid? That she'd somehow magically be able to take care of it full time and also continue getting A's in school. Tell me about it. That level of stupidity reminds me of a friend who said to her 17 year old active daughter and said, if you want to get on birth control you can pay for your damn self. This was an effort to stick it to her daughter and teach her consequences. I wouldn't be thrilled if my 17 year old was active but damn. I'm going to pay to get her on the pill. I don't want her to get knocked up to teach her a life lesson about responsibility. Edit, meant so say I wouldn't be thrilled, but instead wrote that I would be thrilled. Those are opposites. You have common sense. A lot of people don't have any hence your friend's attitude towards their daughter. 